Now, the National People's Congress in China is being closely followed in Taipei. Tensions between China and Taiwan have spiked in recent weeks due to a recent incident which took place in the waters surrounding Jinmen, a group of Taiwanese-controlled islands just kilometers from the shores of China. In the incident, a Taiwanese Coast Guard pursuit of a Chinese fishing vessel led to the death of two Chinese fishermen. China's Coast Guard has increased patrols around Jinmen. Taiwanese officials say that is raising the risk of an accident spiraling into conflict. Correspondent James Chater reports now. From the beaches of Taiwan's Jinmen Islands, Chinese skyscrapers are well within eyesight. Taiwanese tour boat captain Hong Tianqing has long worked the narrow stretches of water separating the two sides. But since two Chinese fishermen died in a recent incident with Taiwan's Coast Guard, he's been much more cautious when heading out to sea. Before, we used to go over there, but we can't anymore because the Chinese Coast Guard is patrolling. We used to come across them quite often, and there wasn't a problem. Now we just do our best not to go there. Since the deadly capsizing, videos on Chinese social media show the Coast Guard pressing ahead with more patrols around Jinmen. Sometimes even using the Hokkien language, commonly spoken in Taiwan. Taipei says several Chinese vessels have entered prohibited waters during those patrols. But Beijing, which claims sovereignty over Taiwan, says such restrictions don't exist. It's that fundamental disagreement which has raised fears a spark here could ignite wider conflict. Being here, you appreciate just how small the margin for error is. This land behind us is the Chinese city of Xiamen with millions of residents. The white vessel in the distance over there is the Chinese Coast Guard. And this land right here is controlled by Taiwan. Now, with China sending more Coast Guard patrols into these waters, Taipei faces a dilemma. Do nothing can they risk China applying even more pressure, but react too strongly, and there's risk of escalation. All this has come at key political moments for both Beijing and Taipei. Taiwan will soon inaugurate its new president, a man who Beijing openly dislikes. And in China, this week is the National People's Congress. There, the country's leaders hiked the defense budget by more than 7% and issued tough words on what they call reunifying Taiwan with China by military force, if necessary. Jinmen still wears the scars of earlier conflict with China, which continued to shell the group of islands well into the 1970s. Local councillor Dong San Bao says that may explain residents' muted response to more frequent Chinese patrols. But he's quick to add, the fundamental tension still exists. Now, it just looks different. War can be more than just a hot war. It's not just about rockets, guns and arms. There's diplomatic wars, trade wars, cold wars. That kind of situation does exist here. But it's just that everyday people's perception of war is still tied to things like cannons. So they aren't as deeply impacted by the recent events. Escalation has been avoided for now. But with ships from both sides continuing to work in such close proximity here, it's likely the fragile stalemate across these waters will soon be tested again. And let's bring in James Chater, who you saw there in that report. He's joining us now from Taipei. So you were in Jinmen, um, islands that belong to Taiwan, but they're situated much closer to China than they are to Taiwan. What do people living there make of the rising tension? Well, look, there's always a bit of a dissonance with situations like this because, of course, people who live on Jinmen are pretty used to these types of Chinese threats. As I mentioned in that report, some people who live on Jinmen have lived experience of, um, of hot conflicts with China. And so it is a bit more difficult for these incidents which kind of operate below the threshold of full war to really cut through with certain people. But that being said, of course, officials and locals in Jinmen recognize that they want this, these, these types of situations to be, to be managed carefully. They recognize there's a risk um, that things could spiral out of control. But at the same time, they also recognize that these people have to go on. Uh, they can't live their lives really in a perpetual state of fear and crisis. And, and when you're kind of going to these places um, and reporting on these types of tensions between Taiwan and China, it's those two realities you kind of have to hold simultaneously in your mind.
One of the announcements to come out of China's National People's Congress is a continuing rise in China's defense spending. How do Taiwan and other Asian countries perceive this rapid growth in China's military power? Yeah, well, look, what a what a what a big increase, 7.2 percent this year, um, far outstripping the overall target growth for the overall economy, which is really a testament to the importance that China is going to continue to place on military expansion despite uh, troubles with its economy. Of course, in Taiwan, we're in this intervening period now where we're waiting for the new president to be inaugurated, president, uh, president-elect Lai ching De, who um, has suggested that he's going to continue in, in the vein of his predecessor, military conscription, compulsory military conscription in Taiwan has now up to one year. Uh, they've also posted record defense budgets. But of course, this is something that's happening across the region. When you look at Japan, which has also posted record defense budgets, and in other kind of US allies, for example, the Philippines developing ties with Washington. Um, all of this a recognition, really, that the situation across the region is becoming more precarious, and governments uh, are responding in turn with these hikes of defense budgets. It's not just Taiwan that has disputes with China over maritime sovereignty. How is China pursuing its territorial sea claims with other neighbors uh, in Asian countries? Yeah, well, of course, the big one that's everyone everyone's looking at the, in the last couple of days has been the very real tensions with the Philippines. And some people would probably argue that this is even more concerning situation, given that Manila is a U.S. Uh, treaty ally, has a mutual defense treaty with Washington. We've seen China, uh, China's Coast Guard firing water cannons at some Philippine vessels, some breaking the glass of Philippine Coast Guard ships, injuring certain people. But again, this is part of a broader strategy that China's been developing over the past couple of years, where they're trying to build a more muscular Coast Guard. With some of these Coast Guard vessels, um, you know, with, with the facilities and the capabilities that look closer and closer to what a military vessel would look like. And so, you know, again, just a testament really to the direction of travel here in the Indo-Pacific and where these maritime tensions, especially with a China that's more assertive uh, in, in uh, pursuing its claims in these waters in the South China Sea, but also around Taiwan. Um, and that's, again, causing these governments to respond in turn. James Chater, correspondent in Taipei. Thank you.